Troglobites. That's the term used for animals that exclusively lives inside an underground habitat. In most cases, it's cave. Troglobites are mostly weird, compared to their non-cave dwelling relatives, that is. One of the oldest known troglobites, and probably one of, if not the most famous one, is the Ohm. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is Ohm? It's probably obvious, but Ohm is a salamander. Ohm is the only species in its genus. The genus is Proteus, and Ohm itself is Proteus anguinus. Proteus is the name of a sea god while anguinus means snake-like. Well, I think so at least. I might be mistaken. The common name itself is the German name for them, the Grotten Ohm, aka the Cave Ohm. Okay, but what exactly is the word Ohm means? I am actually not sure. People just think it's a way to call salamander, but I don't think it's common. But anyway, Ohms are sometimes called human fish by the locals because of the skin color and texture. They are also called cave salamander because, well, they are salamanders that live inside caves. During its discovery, locals thought ohms are the offsprings of cave dragons, which are quite an interesting thought if I do say so myself. But anyway, let's get back to scientific stuffs. The family bears its name, which is Proteidae. This family have two genera. One is Proteus, of course, and the other is Nectarus which includes the more famous water dog, which is not a dog, of course. It's aquatic salamander from the Americas. Ohms themselves are not from the Americas. Ohms can only be found along the underground water systems of the limestone cars in Central and Southeastern Europe. Next, let's talk about their morphology. Ohms are salamander, so naturally, they have a tail and four legs. That differentiate them from the anurans and Sicilians. Olms are one of the neotenic salamander, apparent in the fact that their adults do retain these large external gills. Just like most other troglobites, they have reduced eyes. They technically still have eyes, but it's underdeveloped and covered with skin, so they are mostly blind. Their skins are almost non-pigmented, so it's translucent. Olms are actually one of the biggest troglobites that currently exists. They have an elongated body which can grow up to 30 centimeters, which is not that big if you compare that to known cave dwelling animals, but that is quite exceptional among the troglobites. Even among extant salamanders, that is still quite long, as salamanders are mostly around 15 to 20 centimeters long. Their front legs only have three digits, while their rear legs only have two. In case you didn't know, salamanders usually have five digits on each foot, by the way. Even though they look like they have a flat face like those things you can find in horror movies or games, they do have mouth. They also have tiny teeth. They also have two very small nostrils which are practically unrecognizable. But yeah, it's there. Okay, so what we were talking about is the regular ohm. There is actually a subspecies of the ohm called the black ohm. These are actually quite normal. Their pigments are normal showing darker, brownish or blackish coloration. They also have normal looking eyes and their body is relatively short. Basically, they look like your regular salamander. This subspecies is endemic in the underground water near Chernomel, Slovenia. I'm just gonna put the name here in case I completely butchered the pronunciation. Next, let's talk about their lifestyle and behavior. But before that, We actually know quite a lot about Ohm, relatively that is, compared to some other weird animals that I covered in my channel at least. Ohms are, of course, aquatic animals. They live in cool and well-oxygenated water underground. They swim by undulating their body, but their legs can help them turn to some extent. Ohms are carnivorous. They mostly eat small crustaceans and insect larvae. But since they live in underground caves and food can be scarce a lot of the time, they are basically opportunistic predator, meaning they eat whatever they can. They swallow their prey hole. Their small teeth help trap food particles inside their oral cavity. There was an experiment that shows they can survive 10 years without food, which is quite an exceptional feat, but very helpful because, like I say, food can be scarce in their habitat. 
Just like many other salamanders, olms can be territorial, especially males in breeding season. However, since combat can be a major waste of energy, they mostly do a display contest instead of actually fighting each other. Breeding males will secrete pheromones in their territory to attract females. Males will deliver spermatophores to the female cloaca. The sperm cells will then enter the cloaca and fertilize the egg shells. They are oviparous. Females can lay up to 70 eggs, but usually around 30 eggs. It is reported that females will breed every 12.5 years on average, which is exceptional because most salamanders breed annually. Breeding every 12.5 years would mean they either have a very long lifespan or they have a very slow reproduction rate which could negatively impact their survival. Well, the good news is they do have a long lifespan. Research had predicted a maximum lifespan of 100 years, with an average of around 68.5 years. They reach sexual maturity at around 15 years old. That's an outlier by the way because most salamander can barely even reach 15 years old. Good news is, olms don't really have a natural predator. Still, they are sometimes eaten by bigger animals that got lost in the cave system. Alright, I did talk about their behavior like always, but let's not forget the fact that they are practically blind. So, how could they do their routine when they cannot see? Well, they do have exceptional sensory receptors on their elongated head. The head skin itself is sensitive to light due to the melanopsin pigment. They are seen swimming away from light sources. They also have exceptional chemoreceptors. Chemoreception is most likely their main way of prey detection. They can also send sound waves into water with the sensory epithelia of their inner ears. There was also a research that showed they have electroreceptors called ampullary organs. So yeah, detection is not exactly a problem for them as long as they stay in the water, that is. Detection on air is most likely a problem, but they shouldn't exceed the water in the first place. However, recently, there are sightings of them near the surface, and it is talked about in this article right here, but they still mostly live underground. Olms are considered vulnerable by the IUCN red list of threatened species. Olms are limited to the underground water systems, which is why they are very specialized for such life. The thing is, their habitat is very vulnerable to pollutants. Not only that, their habitat is fragmented. So basically, their habitat is technically easily disturbed. And if it is disturbed, olms will greatly be affected by it. Oh, by the way, olms have been an icon in their respective nation. In Slovenia, olms are natural heritage. It is listed in the Slovenian Red List of Endangered Species. It is considered critically endangered in Croatia and is protected by the legislation. Olms also bring enthusiasm from researchers and tourists. Postojna Cave in Slovenia is famous for its olm and has been a successful ecotourism spot in Slovenia. So yeah, attention and research on olm is not gonna stop, for a while at least. Who knows what peculiar information will be learned about them in the future. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, because there are some variations between population, some herpetologists assigned them to different species in the past. But nowadays, the general consensus is they are indeed one species. Anyway, enjoy your day.